Hey everyone, welcome back to another terrarium update. Today we're going to be taking the one year look at the tiny native terrariums. Currently the tiny terrarium demonstration is the most watched video on my channel at about 2 million views and first of all, I never expected that any of my videos would get that many views and second of all, I can't believe that it's the tiny terrarium video that has that many views. I mean, I really didn't put that much work into that video comparatively to a lot of my other videos, but I think it's just the selling point of being a tiny terrarium. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little preface before we get into this. And if you haven't seen the video, I linked it up here, of course. But let's do a little update on all of these terrariums and we'll do some maintenance, of course, and show you guys what's going on. To begin, we'll do a brief overview of the five of these, and then we'll take a look at them all each individually as we do the maintenance. Of the five, these two are not doing so well, and by that I mean that they're pretty much dead. Unfortunately, they kind of dried out, and I think that maybe some air was sneaking in through the corks, but they dried out, and then there's really no life to speak of in there. So what I want to do is rehydrate these, add a little bit more moss, and get them up to speed with the other three. Now onto the other three, they're doing fairly well, but unfortunately there's a little bit of algae buildup in there, and this one is a little bit overgrown. So what we'll do is we'll remove whatever algae we can, trim them up as necessary, maybe add a few new elements, and then we'll add some additional springtails to combat the leftover algae. Overall, these terrariums are doing fairly well, maybe a little bit better than I had anticipated. Uh, unfortunately, whenever you're working with native plants, and whenever I say native plants, I'm referring to temperate plants specifically. Obviously, the term native plant is subjective to wherever you live, so you could live in a tropical area and you're probably not going to run into this issue. But whenever you're living in the United States, for example, where we have temperate plants and you're using them in terrariums, I would have to say that at least 70% of the plants, they're just not going to work long term. They may thrive for a little bit and then they'll just kind of die off now you can't find ones that will actually work long term but it's rare so whenever you're working with terrariums and you're wondering man it just it's not working all my plants keep dying if you're just sourcing plants locally that could be the reason and i would recommend trying some tropical plants and that's what i prefer to work with but anyways we'll start doing the maintenance on these and i'll show you what kind of tools i have over here to do so before we are off the materials that I intend to use, here I have a little pipette, and yes, this time around I actually have a real pipette. I was using a straw, and we have some dechlorinated water over here that we're going to use to rehydrate the terrariums. Then I have some tweezers here. I'm probably only going to use these ones. I'm not really sure why I grabbed these ones, but some tweezers, and we've got some tiny scissors for tiny terrariums. I mean, why not? Then we've got some Q-tips. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use these or not. I mainly have these to wipe off any excess algae. And then we have a bamboo shish kebab skewer and some toothpicks, and these will be used to kind of aerate the substrate a little bit and remove algae. So let's get into some maintenance. We'll start out here with the one that's overgrown. I think it's probably best to start with this one because whatever moss we trim out of it, we can just reuse in some of our other terrariums. Check that out, it's all pretty much growing out of the top, that's pretty cool. So I think what I'm gonna do is just gently snip some of this moss and then we'll pull it out with the uh, tweezers. I've never actually used these scissors before, I just bought them today for this purpose. Unfortunately, they're not cutting too well. I went and got a different pair of scissors because I really don't want to uh, just rip all this moss out. Some of it I kind of want to just trim. So let's see if we can't cut some of this out. I 
Now that I've trimmed some of that forest in there, I kind of want to come in and see what amount of algae I can kind of scrape out of here, if any. Now we'll come in with this Q-tip and just kind of clean some of this junk off the glass. Probably would help, maybe I'll dip it in water first. Now I've got the container all cleaned out, we've trimmed up the moss and whatnot. I'm gonna kind of get these logs, or I guess they're not really logs, they're just kind of like little twigs, but I want to get those back to how they were. Just like that. And we will add maybe like two drops of water in here. One, two, three, and a little bit more. Now that we've got it all up to speed, we're just gonna add some springtails. And the way that I'll add them this time is I will just kind of shake a piece of charcoal over the top of this with some tweezers. So um, let me get a piece of all this culture here. All right, so now we've got that all good. Let me just take a final look at it before I close it up. Yep, I think it's looking good. The moisture content looks good as well. And let's cork this bad boy up. Next we'll move on to this tall skinny one here and with this one I'm not really trying to remove any of the moss but I am trying to pick out some of the algae and this one it's more stringy kind of looks like it could be hair algae so I'm just going to kind of pick it out with my tweezers the best I can if, if I even can. So I think what I'll do is I'll just press this down into the um, substrate then. So essentially what we have here is like a moss base, a little ground area. And I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll scape it here in a little bit with some new hardscape elements. So I think what I want to do now is kind of pull some of this moss back to expose a little bit of the uh, substrate here. And what I'm going to do is fill the front with sand. So what I'm going to do is I got a little piece of paper folded up here, put a little bit of sand on here, and I'll turn the terrarium on its side. Luckily everything is kind of just in place right now so pour the sand in there make a little bit of a different look for this one creates a little bit of an interesting look and we will add some stones in here There we go. Man, that, that was hard to get it to lay just right. And from here, I'm gonna add the water now. Just get a drop here, drop here. Couple drops there. And I have some twigs from the original demonstration and I'm gonna try to get these down in there 
to look kind of cool. So unlike the other one where they're kind of angled in the container itself, this one I want them like actually sticking out of the ground. Yep, and I think that will do it. And now we'll cork this one up. So right now, the vision for this one, you might not see it, but what I want to happen is all of this moss in the background, I want it to grow up tall and kind of fill in with these sticks here. So it kind of looks like a, uh, a undergrowth in a forest or something like that. And then keep this foreground with the rocks and sand look like that. Next on to the smallest one of the bunch. Now this one isn't doing as well as I had initially thought in the beginning of the video, but if, yeah, I wanted to actually remove this log here and then we're just going to clean off the glass here with one of these Q-tips. So we've got this all cleaned up. What I'm going to do is dip some of this moss in the water that I got out of that other terrarium. I'm just going to stuff it right down on in here. We'll put this stick back in there, which I think it was actually a plant at one point in time, but now it's a stick. Clean enough. So yeah, I mean, this one's so small. What can you really do with it? Cork it back up. And now onto this one. So this one, I can see the cork is just like straight up crumbling to pieces. So I will actually go and get a cork to replace this here in a second. I can't even get it out of the container itself. Let's see if these scissors come in handy now. Okay, so this one, there's a little bit of moss left in here and it's dried up. So I think that it could come back to life but I want to add new moss just in case that doesn't occur. This one I'm gonna do a little bit differently. I've got a patch of duckweed and some thread moss from one of my vivariums. Both of these were actually sourced locally, so it is still keeping with the theme of a native terrarium and I have some of the logs that were originally in here. So uh, there's some liverwort on this patch of moss as well. So we'll add this in the back. Good enough. I could get a new cork. All right, so I was going through all my corks and whatnot, and I wasn't able to find a decent cork, but I saw this bottle in here of uh, Blanton's Bourbon, and I was thinking, you know, hey, maybe that cork will fit. It's kind of loose on this container, so I can't really use it for this anymore. Check this out. And... That's pretty cool, right? See, that's why I don't like getting rid of anything. I can just go down into my bin and find something cool like this that will just fit onto one of my terrariums. However, I just realized that I forgot to put the springtails in here. So let's do that real quick. So with this one, we're gonna keep it really simple. I'm just gonna stuff a patch of moss in there. No scaping or anything like that. 
We'll add the springtails, of course, which I don't really think we need them in this one since it's so minimal. But why not? We'll add a few just in case. And just like that, we're done. We'll take a look at all of them now. And that about does it for the one year update on the tiny terrariums, but there's one more thing that I want to cover real quick before we close up on this. You may have seen that whenever I was going through all of the terrariums that there wasn't really any springtails live, and that's totally fine. Although I always stress the use of springtails in terrariums, they're not necessarily needed. However, you want to think about what's going on in a terrarium. It's a closed environment with a bunch of moisture and organic material. It's pretty much the perfect environment for mold to occur. And mold tends to occur most often whenever you first set up a terrarium and it's becoming acclimated. So if you put springtails in a terrarium when it's first set up, then you pretty much won't have any issues with mold. If it pops up, they'll eat it and they should be able to last in a terrarium long enough before it becomes established. However, in my larger terrariums and some of the other ones that I've had going for over, over a year or so, the springtails are still alive and thriving. I just think with these ones, since they're so small, it's just... It doesn't provide enough living area, organic material, so you know, different things like that for the springtails to last long term. So I just wanted to throw in a little tidbit about that so that just, you know, just throw some extra knowledge out there. And that officially sums it up. As always, I appreciate you guys and I thank you for watching. We've got a lot of cool terrarium builds coming up in the near future, as well as a lot of different projects with my animals and whatnot, and just a lot coming up. So, I'll see you guys next time, and peace.